Good day students. Welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problem number eight of our unit four test on the application of derivatives. In this clip, we're going to be focusing on related rates, okay? Before we um, consider the question, let's take a look at the strategy for solving related rates problems. Okay, so the strategy is as follows. Um, first of all, you want to create a well-labeled diagram if applicable, or sometimes you might want to generate um, a formula or an equation. And then you want to assign variables to all given quantities and quantities to be determined. Number two, you write an equation involving the variables whose rates of change either are given or are to be determined. Now, one thing you want to note is in some problems, just as the one we're doing today, you might have a variable whose rate of change is not provided. In that case, you have to substitute out that variable, making use of um, some geometric tools or other formulas that you've learned in algebra. And then in part three, using the chain rule, implicitly differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to t. After that, it becomes an algebra problem when you do step four, which is substitute into the resulting equation all known values for the variables and the rates of change and solve for the required rate of change. All right, so we have our little guide here on the right for a reference, and we're going to apply it to problem number eight. So it reads, water is being poured into a conical pit with a base radius of 10 feet and a depth of 12 feet. If water is being poured into the tank at a two cubic feet per minute, how fast is the water level rising when the water level is four feet tall? Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to create a well-labeled diagram, okay? So there goes our conical tank that's inverted. So we have the um, base radius is um, 10 feet. So the base radius, let's indicate that, that's um, 10 feet. All right, and then the height of the tank is 12 feet or the depth, let's indicate that also. So this is 12 feet, the depth of the tank. All right, and then let's uh, pick an arbitrary depth where we're going to be calculating how fast um, the water level is rising, okay? So if we pick an arbitrary depth, say um, depth H, right here, let's say okay, it's right here. So for this arbitrary depth, um, this will be the radius R, and then this will be the, this will be the height H right here, okay? All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the question to see the rates that are provided and the rates that are not provided, okay? So in order to determine what variable should stay in our um, equation or formula, we want to look at the rates that are given and the rates that are to be determined. Okay, if you consult our strategy guide right here, it says rates that are given and the ones to be determined. Those are the only ones that should stay, okay? So if you look at the question, um, it says water is being poured into the tank at two cubic feet per minute. So this is 
what is growing here? Cubic feet? That is um, volume. So this right here is dv dt. dv dt is given. Okay? So we know what's given. Now let's see the rate, other rate that's provided. Um, how fast is the water level rising? We're looking at the height. How fast is it rising? This is dH dt. And this is what we are to find. All right? So let's go ahead and write the equation that relates the volume and the height. Do you remember the volume of a cone? The formula for the volume of a cone is given by pi um, r squared h divided by 3. Okay? All right, now what do you notice here? Which variables are to stay and which variable is to go? Notice in our strategy guide, variables with no rates should be substituted out. So we do not know what the rate of change of the radius is. So if we differentiate, we will have the RDT if we allow R to remain in this equation. So we need to substitute out R since the RDT is not given. Okay, so let's write this down. Substitute out R since the RDT is not given. Okay? So the question is, how do we substitute out R? Well, if you look at this situation here, we have similar triangles. So we can use our knowledge from geometry and similar triangles to um, express R in terms of H. Okay? So let's go ahead and draw our similar triangles here again. So we have um, two similar right triangles. So we have a bigger one and then a smaller one. So we can set up we know if two triangles are similar corresponding size and proportion, right? So this is R, and this right here is 10. The entire length is um, 12, and this piece right here is H, okay? So R over H is equal to, R corresponds to 10 over 12, which corresponds to H. If you isolate R, you have R equals we can reduce this, right? Divide this by 2, top and bottom. So we have 5 over 6H is R. So what are we going to do next? We want to express this formula in terms of only the variables with the rates that are given or to be determined, namely V and H. So we're going to have V equals pi instead of R. I'm going to have 5 over 6h, okay? So I'm basically substituting this r value here, square, because r is squared, divided by 3, all right? So you notice this equation now has only v and h, the two variables that we know their related rates, okay? Their rate of change, sorry. Okay, let's simplify first, make this equation look pretty before we go ahead and differentiate implicitly. So if we simplify, we're going to have V is equal to, if we square this, we have 25 over 36. So we have 25 pi H squared times H is H to the third divided by, now 6 squared is 36. 36 times 3 is 108. Okay, so there goes our volume. Now we have it in this format. Let's go ahead and differentiate implicitly. Derivative of v is just 1. Since we're differentiating with respect to time, we have 1 dv dt. On the side of the right, we'll factor out 25 pi over 108 using the constant multiple rule and just differentiate h to the third with respect to t. 
So that becomes 3h squared using the chain rule, d, dh dt. dh <coughs> dt, okay? All right. So let's um, simplify this. Dress it up a little bit. dv dt equals um, 25. Well, 3 goes into 108, right? 3 goes into 108, 36 times. So 3 goes here once, 3 goes here 36. So we have 25 pi um, h square over 36 dh dt. Okay? Now we can substitute. Notice we were, we were given an h value in the problem. So it says, find the rate of change, find the h dt when the water level is 4 feet. So one big mistake most students make is they substitute the value um, before they differentiate. So you don't do that. You differentiate first before you substitute the value. That helps you find um, the rate of change. Okay? All right. So now we can make our substitution. What are the substitutions that we're going to make? Well, we know what dvdt is. We also know what... Um, H is. Okay, so recall, let's put that on the side. DV dt is how fast water was being poured into the tank. Okay, that was three cubic feet per minute. And the height was four feet. Okay, so let's go ahead and substitute that into this equation. So that is going to give us um, 2 equals 25 pi times 4 square over 36 dh dt. Okay? Now this is just algebra from here on out. We want to isolate the h dt. Okay? So that will be the um, rate at which the height of the water is rising. Okay, so the HDT simply multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this um, number here is going to be 2 times the reciprocal is 36 over 25 pi. 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, so let's go ahead and reduce this. Um, let's see. Uh, we can reduce by 4. 4 goes here 9 times. 4 goes here 9 times. And 4 goes here 4 times. 2 goes here once. And 2 goes here twice. Looks like that's it. So we have the HDT equals 9 divided by 50 pi. Okay, and the unit is feet for the height per minute. That is the unit of time. Okay? All right, now let's contextualize our answer. What on earth does this mean? Let's, let's state what the answer means. Um, the water level, the water level is doing what? It is rising at 9 over 50 pi feet per minute, right? So um, there goes the solution to our problem. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool tutorials such as this. More clips can be found on math.serve.com. And if you like to request any math tutorials or have any questions or comments, include that in the comments section below. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.